Hi, my name is Max with Hardwire Electronics, and today we're going to be going over logic functions. Now, before we jump in and start creating logic functions, it helps to know the different types of logic operation. Now, these operations are AND, OR, XOR, NOR, and NAND. If you've never seen any of these before, they might look confusing, but once you understand them, they're really quite simple. All they do is compare two inputs, and based on those inputs, they have a certain output. Now this is the, lot, the diagram for a AND gate, and this is a diagram for an OR gate. Now you don't need to understand these diagrams to understand how they work. To understand how they work, we first need to talk about Boolean values. Now although they've, they've got a quite interesting name, Boolean values are really simple. There's only two Boolean values, and those are true or false. When we're talking about digital electronics, we tend to use the binary values 1 or 0, which can be thought of as either on or off. The analogy I've used here is switches. So a closed switch can be thought of as a digital 1, and in this case we'll turn something on, and an open switch can be thought of as a digital 0, which will turn something off. Now throughout the rest of the video, I'll be using true or false, on or off, 1 or 0. They all mean exactly the same thing. In the next section on truth tables, we'll draw them using 1 or 0, and that's just to make the tables a bit more simple. So this is what a truth table looks like. It shows us what the output will be for all the different combinations of the two inputs, A and B. Now this is the truth table for an AND operation, and what that's looking for is the case when both A and B are both on, or they're both true. And in that case, the output will be on. And we can see that here, where input A and input B are both on, the output is on. Now we'll take a look at all the other scenarios and see what the AND function does in those scenarios. So when input A is off and input B is off, A and B are both not on. So in that case, A and B will be off. When input A is off and input B is on, so A and B are both not on again, then the output will be off. And then the other way around, if input A is on and input B is off, then A and B will be off. So that for an AND operation, the only time that the output is on is when both A and B are both high. For an OR operation, what it's looking for is the case when either A or B are on. So we'll go through all the scenarios and see what the outputs will be for all the different combinations of inputs. So we've got to remember that an OR is looking for the case when either of the inputs are on. So when input A is off and input B is off, or they're both zeros, then neither A or B are on, so A or B will mean the output is off. In the case where input A is off and input B is on, then one of A or B, in this case B, is on, so A or B will be true and the output will be on. Likewise, the other way around, if input A is on and input B is off, then A or B will evaluate to true because one of the two inputs is on. Now this is the case that confuses some people when both A and B are both on. Because the OR gate is asking, is A or B on? And in this case, they're both on. But an OR gate will evaluate to true, and the output will be on when both A and B are on. That's worth remembering. Now, if we've got a scenario where we want the output to be on when A or B is on, but we want it to be off when they're both on, then we use an XOR which stands for exclusive OR. And the, the output of this will only be on when A or B are high, but not both of them. So we'll go over the truth table now and look at what the outputs will be. So like the OR, if A and B are both off, then the output will be off for an XOR. When input A is off and input B is on, then A or B are on, so the output is on. And likewise, the other way around, when A is on and B is off, A, X, or B will be true. 
But in the case when A and B are both on, because this is looking for the exclusively the cases when A or B are on, then it will be false. So when A and B are both on, an XOR will mean that the output is off. The next operation to look at is NOR. Now, a NOR is the exact opposite of an OR. It stands for NOT OR. So if we look at the OR, we can see that in these bottom three cases, that's when an OR gate will be on. Whereas a NOR, in these bottom three cases, they're off. So it's the exact opposite. So it's looking for the case when A and B are both false. So we can see that here, when A is off and B is off, then A nor B will be on. And in all the other cases, when A or B are high, they will be off. The last logic operation we'll look at is NAND, and that stands for not AND. And it works in exactly the opposite way as an AND gate. So we can see that an AND would work when A and B are on, the output is on. Whereas with a NAND, when A and B are both on, the output is off. And in all the other cases, they're on. So when A and B are off, A NAND B will evaluate to true and the output will be on. When A is off and B is on, A NAND B will be on. And when A is on and B is off, a NAND B will be on. So it, to remember for NAND, when A and B are on is the only case when the output will be off. So that's all the logic operations and using combinations of these can give us a wide range of functionality. But when we use them with comparison operations, we can do much, much more. So the comparison operations are equals, not equals, greater than, greater than or equals, less than or less than or equals. So we'll look at all these in a bit more detail. Equals is one that we're probably all familiar with and we're comparing two things there, so A and B. And if we say A equals B, that'll evaluate to true when A and B are exactly the same and false when A and B are different. Not equals is opposite to this. So again, if we're comparing A and B, when we say A not equals B, that'll be true when A and B are different and false when A and B are exactly the same. So these two are opposites of each other. Greater than, we'll compare A and B. And if we say A is greater than B, that'll be true when A is higher than B and false when A is lower than B. If A and B are exactly the same, A greater than B will be false. The case that takes care of this is greater than or equals. And when A and B are the same in this one, then this will evaluate to true. Less than is the opposite of this. So if we're comparing A and B, when A is less than B, this will be true. And when A is greater than B, this will be false. Again, when A and B are the same, this will be false. If we want this to evaluate to true when A and B are the same, then we use less than or equals. So this will be true when A and B are the same, and it will also be true when A is less than B, and false when A is greater than B. This can be quite a lot to wrap your head around, and using comparison operations with logic operations to perform the desired function that you want can be quite complicated. So we'll go over some examples now. We'll go over some motorsport specific examples. So we'll use equals to engage the starter motor when a switch is turned on. We'll go over an example with the AND function and we'll do this to turn indicators on and on using a switch and a timer. And then we'll use the greater than function to turn on a radiator fan when the coolant temperature gets above 85 degrees Celsius. So we'll jump over into our software now and take a look at these examples. So now we're in the software, we'll go over the three examples. The first example was using the equals function along with a switch to engage a starter motor. So in the software, we'll go to the configuration tab and I've already got this set up. So we'll enable this output and make a function. So I'm using a can keypad 
but you could use an analog switch or a keypad like I am. So what we're going to do is we're going to say can keypad one state one, so that's the first button on my keypad, equals true. So whenever this button goes true, the output will also go true. So we'll go to the monitor and we'll look at the can keypad and we can see that I've got this first button set as a momentary input. So I'm pressing it now and letting go. And if we see we've got keypad button one equals true, then the output will be true. So I'm going to press the button now and we can see that the starter output has turned on. So that functions correctly. We'll now look at the second example, which is using the AND operation. And we're going to take an, a switch and AND it with a timer and use it to turn on the indicators. So we'll have a timer that's constantly going high and low. And we'll AND this with a switch input. And this will mean that whenever the switch is high and the timer's high, our output will be high. But when our timer's low, the output will be low. This will mean that whenever we press the button, the indicators will go on and off with the timer. And then whenever the button's not pressed, it will always be off. So we'll set this up in the software now. You can see my indicator is set on the second button of my CAN keypad. So if I press it now, it'll latch on. And if I press it, it'll latch off. I've also got a timer configured that will be 500 milliseconds on and 500 milliseconds off. So we'll now set up an output function for the indicators. We'll enable it and we'll say it's on if, and this is can keypad button two. And timer one. So now whenever the button's pressed and the timer's high, the output will be on. And then when the timer goes low, it'll be off. If I send that to the PDM and we go to the monitor tab, we can see that the button's still working. And then if I go to the outputs and I press the button, it flashes on and off. So now we'll look at the final example, which is the greater than function. And this will turn on a radiator fan when the coolant temperature is above 85 degrees. Now I'm not plugged into a car, so this won't actually work, but I'll show you how to set it up. So output three is connected to a radiator fan. And we'll turn this on and make the function. So we'll be receiving our coolant temperature over the CAN bus. So we're looking for CAN in variable one, which is reading from a temperature sensor. And we'll say that when that is greater than 85, then the output will be on. So what happened now is we'll be receiving this data on the CAN bus, and as soon as the temperature goes above 85 degrees, the output will turn on. So that's all the examples we've got for you today. Thanks for watching, and if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to get in touch.